Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the second part of the first lecture. Okay, in the last uh, part, we have discussed that the main objective of our manager is to have the sustainable industry profit. So, apart from the decisions which are being taken by the manager, these five forces are going to affect the profit of an industry. The first one, one is the entry. Entry means what? Entry of the new firm in the same industry. How does it affect the fund who is already in the industry and how can it affect its profit? So it depends upon the entry cost, speed of adjustment of the new entry, the sunk cost which it has to bear, the economies of scale, how the firm, new firm is going to earn the economies of scale, whatever the network effect it has, what is its reputation, how rapidly it is going to adjust the switching costs and what are the government rules and regulations in order to enter into that industry. So apart from the industry, two other forces. One is a part of the input supplies and the other one is a part of the buyers is going to affect the industry's profit. Part of the buyers. It depends on the buyer concentration. Buyer concentration means the number of the buyers in the market. The more the number of the buyers in the market, less is the buying power a part of the buyer and less the number of the buyers in the market, more is the part of the buyers. Price value of the substitutes. What the product you are offering and what are the alternatives and what is the price and the values of those alternatives in the, in the point of view of the buyers. Relationship specific investment. What type of the relationship does the buyer have with you? Customer switching cost. If you want to switch off, the, uh, what is the cost if the buyer is going to switch your product in reference to the new entrant and what are the rules and regulations with the type of the taxes which is being levered on the buyers. Now this is the part of the input suppliers. Input suppliers means which are the major uh, suppliers of the raw material which you are using in your production. Supply concentration, number of sellers, number of the suppliers of the input to you. More the number of the suppliers of the input less is their power, less the number of the buyers, uh, number of the suppliers of the input, uh, more is their power. Price productivity of the alternative inputs. The raw material which is being offered by this, uh, these suppliers, what are the other alternatives of this raw material and what are their prices? What type of the relationship you do have with these suppliers? Supplier switching cost. If you want to that your raw material instead of one supplier towards the other supply what type of switching cost you want to bear and what type of the government restrictions government restraints government rules and regulations for the suppliers whatever tax what type the price restrictions are being levered on them now the two remaining for, uh, forces which are going to affect the industry profit are the industry rivalry and the substitutes and the complements now what do you mean by the industry rivalry when a new firm is going to enter into your industry, it means the number of the firms has been increased. Now the number of firms has been increased, more the number of the firms are, more is the type of the competition. Less the number of firms are, less the type of the competition. Price, quantity, quality and the service competition. The uh, price of this, this firm uh, product and the competition along with uh, in reference to the price of your product. The quality of this product, uh, this firm's product and the quality of the your firm's product. This is going to lead towards the competition. Degree of the differentiation, how your product is going to differentiate with the new firm. Switching cost, timings of the decisions. What type of management do you have and what type of management do the other persons have? So, decision timings is very important and how rapidly you are going to take the decisions is more profitable for you information more information yeah do you have more information it means you have go you must have the first mover advantage the less information you have you will always be on the back step and the government rules and regulations for your industry now substitutes and complements there are two types of uh, goods which are being relevant towards your product now a new firm is entered into the market and the type of the product which is being offered by this uh, firm it could be the substitute it means it may be similar to that of your product or it may be the complement 
complementary goods or complementary good means that this product is being used along with your product the both the products are being used together so price value of the related goods and services price value of the complementary goods and the services network effects what type of networks do you have and what types of network of the new entrant have and the government rules and regulation now you can see that these forces and the among these forces one point which is the government restrictions or the government rules and regu regulations or the government uh, participation in the industry is the common it means the government can interfere at each and every point but as far as the uh, demand driven economy is concerned the government doesn't interfere into the market much often so along with the decisions which are being made by the manager these five types of the forces are going to affect the sustainable industry profit of the firm now here comes the roles of the incentives understanding the firm's incentives now what do you mean by the incentive incentive is something which is going to compel you to do something not force you to compel you it means incentive is the form of the word like if you are going to uh, see on your facebook or some ad that's the sale of buy one get one free it is an incentive that it is going to compel you to go towards that shop and purchase that good so incentives are very important as among the 10 major principles of the economics that the one principle is that rational people respond towards the incentive rational means all the consumers according to the theory of the utility all the consumers are rational and they're going to respond towards the incentive incentives is something uh, something like that that which is going to compel you to do something now incentives play an important role within the firm incentives determine what how the resources are utilized and how hard the individual works if you offer the incentives that uh, the uh, a worker of the month worker of the day or uh, like awards like someone who is going to be punctual will be rewarded like this now this is these are the incentives and they're going to increase the level of the productivity of the workers which they offer to you managers must understand the rules of the role of the incentives play in the organization the more rational incentives are being placed within the organization the more will be the productivity of the organization constructing proper incentive will enhance productivity and profitability proper incentive means that you can't give an incentive of a 1000 cc car to an individual because it will increase your cost so proper incentive means that it will be no so much valuable that it will harm your profit or no it must be so minim so much minimal that it is not going to compel anyone for example if you give the incentive only 100 rupees no one is going to bother that but if you give the incentive of 10000 rupees people will go uh, notice it and they are going to respond according to it market interactions now what type of the market interaction do you have when you enter into the market number one is the consumer producer rivalry consumer producer rivalry means is the interaction between the consumer and producer now as of from the point of the of the consumer as do their demand they want to reduce the price and now from the point of view of the producer as they supply the product they want to increase the price the consumer attempt to locate the low price while the producer attempt to charge the high price number two is the consumer consumer rivalry this type of rivalry you can see on your facebook page or some other net when the thing when the uh, there is the uh, clearance sale of about 50% at some uh, brand one you can see that the large number of the people have gathered there and they are trying to attempt to uh, to gather the goods which are in a limited amount the scarcity of the good reduces the negotiating power of the consumers as they compete for the right to those goods it means consumer consumer rivalry will be only there when there whenever there is a scarcity of the goods whenever the goods are not scarce this type of rivalry will be at the minimal level producer producer rivalry scarcity of the consumers causes the producers to compete with one another for the right of the service customers you can see this type of live rivalry among the telecommunication companies for example the u phone and the telenor you phone or the mobile link because of the fact the market is already saturated now in order to attract the customers towards the telenor they have to give them so such types of incentives that the people will be able to 
leave their original network which may be the mobile link and moves towards the telenor so this type of the rivalry exists over there where the market is already saturated and role of the government role of the government is always is in the form of that it disciplines the market process now among the 10 basic principles of the economics the role of the government was there the government can sometimes intervene the market outcome not always the government intervenes the market outcome but it's sometimes and when is sometimes sometimes that when the market fails to function properly and due to some extra interventions and extra interventions can be in the form of the market failure or the market power when the market is not functioning properly then the government comes into the market intervenes into the market correct the shortages or the surface this is surpluses which are already generated into the market and then leaves the market so these are the, the market interactions with the consumer producer rivalry consumer consumer rivalry producer producer rivalry and the role of the government here comes the time value of the money time value of the money it is that these are the decisions which are being made by the manager for the investment purposes if you have to make up the investment of one thousand dollars today you have to being a manager you should be considered you should be bothered about what is the value of the money which i am going to receive after uh, so approximately a time of period of the one year or two year so the the economists have devised the concepts of the present value and the future value now present value is what you have today in the form of the monetary money and the future value is that which you will you receive in future time period now there are two things which are involved in it and is that period in the future if future time period means it could be one year two year three year four years or five year ten years it may be any time period and i represents your interest rate okay the formula which is being used to convert the fair present value into future value or future value into the present value is the star pv is equal to fv over one plus i raised to power n where i is the interest rate and n is the number of years which is your number of time period for example what would be the present value of 100 dollar in 10 years if the interest rate is equal to seven percent so you are going to put your 10 over here and one plus i i means seven percent seven percent is 0 0.07 percent and the n is equal to this 10 so you can calculate what is the present value of this future value uh, what is the present value of hundred dollars which is also is the future value now you can convert the formula is that if the present value is given to you you can evaluate the future value by cross multiplying the component of 1 plus i raised to power n towards that of the pv present value versus the future value now Present value catch is your tier. present value is actually that thing which you have today and the future value is that thing which you will get in the future. Now the difference between these two things is the opportunity cost of waiting. Opportunity cost of waiting is that as the time period is involved with a uh, uh, in is involved by calculating from the present value towards the future value or from the future value towards the uh, present value this opportunity cost of waiting is the basic difference between the present value and the future value so if you want to write as that the present value will be equal to future value minus opportunity cost of waiting now suppose if the interest rate is equal to zero then the opportunity cost of waiting will be equal to zero how it will be equal to zero where one plus zero if the interest rate is equal to zero plus and then this for this term will become one plus zero one plus zero is equal to one and one raised to power for example 10 years it will remain 10 then the present value will be equal to the future value now the present value will be differentiated from the future value if the rate of interest is going to be more than zero if the interest rate increases the higher the opportunity cost of waiting and lower present value so for example you have to do it by yourself that for example what is the present value 1080 dollars in one year if the interest rate is eight percent per year you will do it by yourself as a practice questions now at the end of the lesson i am going to give you a cp and all class participation and also a quiz in your regular class in order to convert from the present value towards that of the future value let's go a bit further on this concept what is the present value of uh, $100,000 to be received at the time period of the 10 year 
but the interest rate is equal to 10 percent you can also calculate it by yourself by putting it in the formula i have placed in the formula you have to find out the answer by yourself oh, for example if we have got a series in the earlier part we have just we are just, in the earlier part we were just concerned with the lump sum amount that you have invested today and what you are going to expect in the future so in terms of the series what will be the consequences i will discuss it in the next part of the same lecture